Hundred fourteen thousand dollars. Is that right? That's that's about what it would yeah, be. So, yeah. Okay. okay. That's the number. So if you if you look at the bottom of, of that second page, you can see that the the total uh, general fund budget is five million eight, and the actual levy is four million eight, almost four million nine. And you can see line by line where the differences are between the working budget and what we're levying for. So it's it's possible that we could we could dip a fair bit into the, the general fund uh, fund balance. So we'll still end up with seven or eight ish million dollars in our general operating fund. It's all pretty speculative at this point. I think um, what that would look like. I mean, it depends on what we collect. It depends on what we spend. Okay, but a portion of it for sure. Any other questions about the proposed levy? But we'll, we'll clear. We'll certainly have more than our annual budget in a general operating surplus at the end of the fiscal year. Whether we'll have six million or seven million or eight million, maybe there's some question. But we'll certainly have more than 100 percent of our operating budget. I think that's a reasonable expectation. Yeah. I should note that the Finance Committee has also approved updating our forecast of what our capital needs will be in the future. We don't have that information yet. And the Finance Committee has recommended that we include parking needs in our assessment of future capital needs. So. We don't have all that information in hand yet. Um, until we do, it's really premature for us to draw conclusions about how much reserves we need. Um, because those are dependent on details that are still to be updated. We have the information from our most recent estimates of those costs. Um, and some members of the board and finance committee discussion has indicated a desire to have more information that projects those costs more clearly. So that's in progress. Um, the committee did recommend uh, approving the levy. Uh, and so I move that we uh, approve the levy as proposed uh, with the modifications in uh, special funds and general revenue to keep the levy at the same level as last year. Is there a second? I'll second. <clears throat> Any more discussion? This is a reminder too, it's a, as we discussed at the Finance Committee meeting, it's important that we don't lower the levy because if we do it for the third year in a row, we, we, we're on a longer range plan to kind of look at ways to decrease what we levy. But if we do it three years in a row, then we lose the ability to raise that um, if we if a need arises. So um, well, it's averaged, so correct. it would but, be but, lower. But, but the point be, is, so we can, we, we would lose we, the ability. No, we would lose the, we lose an ability, and then what happens is it resets now if we don't lower it three years in a row. So next year we could lower it again, but if we lower it this year, we, we kind of penalize ourselves. So it doesn't make any sense to to go below um, where we are right now with the proposed levy. But next year we can lower it and not suffer a consequence. So what we're voting on is to bring it forward next month for a final vote. Oh, okay, so this was just thank you for clarification. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Would you like to take a vote? Please. Okay. Trustee Riddle. Thanks. Um, I abstain. Trustee I'm Johnson. Abstain. I abstain. <clears throat> Trustee Johnson. No. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Barshus. Yes. Trustee Fisherman. Yes. Thank you. Was there something that you didn't hear? Is that so? Okay. okay. Gotcha. Okay. In terms of the question. Okay. Behind tab number five are the holidays and uh, library closures. 
there are no, they're the same number of days that were experienced in 2019, and the only date that's pending is the uh, Staff Institute day, which occurs on a Friday, and the library generally closes for that. So can I have a motion that we approve this? I'll motion we approve the, the date. Okay, Stuart moves that we approve the 2020 calendar. Is there a second? Second. Uh, okay. Any discussion? Roll call. Hearing none. Oh, Trustee Rivers. Aye. <laughs> Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Wolf. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Barges. Yes. Trustee Fisher. Yes. This is about the endowment plan. Yeah. There's no document for that. Okay. So just Ron is going to. Ron, leave do you want to talk about because we talked about the endowment fund at the last finance committee? Yes. The finance committee resolution. discussed the existence of the endowment fund. I don't recall in what year it was created. It had an initial contribution of about seven thousand um, dollars. A number of years after that, we received an endowment and we put $25,000 from that endowment into the fund, um, which brought the amount that we placed in the fund directly to about 32, and it's had about $5,000 in growth from interest over the years. At the time that the, the endowment fund was created, our attorneys recommended that we create a 501c3 in order to receive tax exempt contributions. The particular framework for the contributions that were popular at the time but has since become less frequent were employee matching programs in which an employee would designate a contribution to a tax free organization and the employer would match it and generally those were restricted to 501c3s. We no longer need a 501c3 for that purpose because there is a library 501c3 available to us and as a municipal taxing body we also can receive uh, tax exempt our tax deductible contributions and we've done so since then so the conditions under which the endowment fund was created um, have not proven to be uh, a need for us part of the reason for that also was at the time that we created the fund we were anticipating some building projects as those building projects went forward, the state had library construction grants available. And we worked with our state legislators, and the library received $900,000 in state library grant funds as portion or cut toward our construction projects. And so as a result of that, we were not in, we didn't need to go out looking for private contributions. Um, we were able to cover the costs associated with those projects out of the state grants plus the reserve funds. So we have not made use of the in expected purposes of the endowment fund. And it is now the recommendation of the Finance Committee that we dissolve the fund and transfer the, the funds as specified under the relevant legislation into uh, other purposes within the library's budget. So um, that's what the Finance Committee has recommended. I move that we take that action of dissolving the endowment fund um, and proceed to, uh, to transfer those funds into the operating fund. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? It's a little off topic. Do you remember which governor uh, the $900,000 came from, roughly? Three different governors. It wasn't all at once. It was in parts. Yeah. The first project in 1986 received a grant under 
library construction allocations in Governor Thompson's term. Yeah. Jim Edgar was then Secretary of State and actually came to the library okay. to announce. The second award was also library construction monies. Um, uh, the Governor Ryan came to the library yeah. to announce those funds uh, being awarded to us. Huh. Um, uh, our state representative, Jeff Schoenberg, was right? instrumental yeah. in helping. He then became our state senator. Yeah, right. Um, he was instrumental in helping put the third round into legislation, again, under the, under the authority of the state library construction grants that were available. Um, and so it was done in three pieces over a span of about 10 years. Thank you. So currently there's 37,245, whatever the balance is that are, that's in the um, endowment funds. So whatever's in there, it would be totally moved. That's the motion to operating funds or to general funds. So can we have a roll call? Mm -hmm. yeah, one question still. I was wondering what the, um, the impetus was of reviewing it this year. I know we review it every year. What was the impetus of reviewing it and, and um, discussing to, to bring it to zero and transfer it? The question has been raised several times in the past few years. Do we need this? And as we were changing directors, um, three directors in four years, it didn't make sense to proceed until we had someone we expected would be here longer mm -hmm. than one year. And so um, now that we are at that point, uh, the question was raised again, and the Finance Committee in discussion concluded that we could proceed without it. Our present attorneys do not think we need it. Mm -hmm. Our attorneys back at the time it was created gave a different opinion. I can't speak to when certain changes may have been made in legislation and whether the conditions have changed or not. The fund was originally created a few years before I came on the board. So it's been on, it's been in existence for a very long time. Um, we added to it, but we've never used it. Mm -hmm. It hasn't gone anywhere, it, has, it hasn't suffered any loss, but the reality is if we don't need it, then that's an additional filing that has to be completed every year. There's report, there are reporting requirements. I'm particularly familiar with those because I, my own organization is a 501c3. Mm -hmm. And so there is paperwork involved. There are things that have to be done yearly, yearly mm -hmm. in order to maintain it. And it was judged, and, and on the advice of our attorney, we were advised that we didn't need to continue doing that. And was the there other, any? Oh, well, the other reason was they thought at one point when it was established, I believe, just based on it, that that was the only way people could give money to the library, which mm -hmm. is not true. <laughs> yeah. So that was the original vehicle if they had large sums to give. Would you say that there was any influence on the recent um, um, feedback on um, the large reserve that we have? They're totally disconnected. I wasn't sure if it's a way of maybe cleaning cleaning up our balance sheet in a way and using the funds that we have, you know, in a more, I guess, transparent. We could have used those funds. It's not any less transparent in in an endowment that's reported in public documents in the same way, and it's always in the minutes. Certainly, it's been in the the minutes of this board. But certainly every the year that it's utilized existed. funds that we have would be it's really not an issue of transparency at all. Okay. No, and I was just wondering if that had any Because it's all part of the public record that we have it, that we approve it each year. You know, every every year I've been on the board there's been activity and reports about that fund. The endowment fund. Yeah. The endowment fund. And we started talking I mean, like like Ron said, we've talked about it for, for many years and just as Ron said, because we were going through all these transitions with directors, we didn't want to remove the endowment fund without having the, the newer director have a chance to kind of assess whether or not it made sense for something based on their previous experience I elsewhere. See. I so, see. So yeah. yeah. So that's mm. yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Ready to vote? Mm-hmm. Trustee Riddle? Aye. 
Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Yes. Trustee Barges? Yes. Trustee Fisher? Yes. Thank you. Behind. You have a lot of reading material, trustees, <laughs> and so behind tab number six, if you use that first page and flip it over, uh, for physical year 2020, because we uh, get funds through the Illinois Public Library per capita equalization grant, one of the requirements for trustees is that they will review chapters 11 through the appendices of the trustees facts and file third edition. You've got the reference there and you have a copy there for your reading pleasure. Okay. So that's just information. Cool. Will we be discussing it at any time or? I would note for the record <laughs> that this is a very old document. It still lists all of the library, the, suburb the suburban library system that existed, had, was passed out of existence many years ago. <laughs> so 